Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this stock that you see in my hand and that you saw on a couple different rifles in the intro. It's the Magpul SLS. Um, so this is the latest offering, at least as far as I know, in their SL lineup. This one here is designed to give the user a little bit more cheek weld surface, if you will, uh, compared to the other SL lineup. Uh, offerings. So this one here I've had in for probably about six months and the black one we've had in for about three months. So what we're going to do, of course, first and foremost, let the dogs take a look at it, make sure it's approved by them. And then uh, we'll come back in and go over the details of the stock itself, then do some comparisons to let you guys know sort of how it stacks up size wise, weight wise and stuff like that compared to some other offerings out there on the market. Because I know a lot of you out there, um, are just wondering what stock's the best for me. And I'm gonna tell you that the answer is not the same for everybody. It depends on how you're gonna be using it, your spatial structure, and just your general preferences, if you will. So let's let the dogs take a look at it and then jump into all that. Getting into the features of the stock itself, the first thing we'll go over, of course, is color. As of right now, it's available in four different colors. So we have black, gray, and then it's available in the Magpul FDE that is sort of famous at this point, as well as the OD green. So we'll set one aside just to sort of focus on it, but of course the features are the same regardless of the color. The actual grain of the polymer itself has a little bit of graininess to it. So it's not exactly smooth, but it's not exactly rough either. So that way, if you're, you know, out shooting and you have baby smooth skin or a sunburn or something like that, it's not going to aggravate you, which is certainly a nice thing in terms of the materials. You can see there, of course, it does have that cheek slope to it that we're going to get into a good bit more when we do some comparison work, which is a little bit wider than some, adds a little bit of weight to it, but it also adds some comfort, at least for some folks anyway. So uh, the cheek piece there is wide enough to accommodate a couple battery compartments which we do here up here on the side cool thing about the battery compartments is uh, they're accessible of course from either side because they're on both sides they are rubber sealed so you can see what i have to do here to pull it up you're just basically pulling up on this piece and then pull back and you're going to break the seal if i can do it here on camera there you go. You can see it's got a couple O-rings in there, and that way it is uh, waterproof. I've actually had this out in the rain, actually the black one, and uh, I've had zero issues with moisture getting in there. They are uh, large enough to fit two CR123 batteries in each compartment, so you can add up to four batteries in your stock should you choose to do so. And then, of course, putting it back in, it's just the opposite of what we did. Take it out, push all the way forward, and then push down on it. The butt pad is made of a rubber material. It has a little bit of give to it, but it's actually relatively hard. I'm sure it's absorbing a little bit of recoil, but not too much there. Uh, of course, you can remove it if you want to back these screws out, should you choose to do so. Uh, but the angle here on the stock is something that I think is somewhat important. So if I can line that up so that it's sort of uh, level here with the camera that you guys are seeing, you can see this downward angle as well as the increased angle down here towards the toe. So what that's primarily designed for is for folks who are using body armor. It allows you to sort of roll the rifle up on your shoulder However, I've found that even without using body armor, I think this angle is absolutely better than straight and better than the opposite. I recently reviewed a DPMS Oracle that had a stock that's sort of angled like that, and it was really annoying. So <laughs> I can tell you the opposite of this is really bad. Flat is generally okay, but this angle, in my opinion, is probably the most comfortable. So I certainly do like the butt pad of it. In terms of sling attachment points, of course, it is ambidextrous. So we have our metal QD socket there and if you want to stick your cutie in there you can do so just like so you can see it doesn't rotate fully due to the actual stock itself impeding the QD swivel but there isn't an anti-rotation uh, feature built into it of course it's going to be the same on the other side you just push it in and pull out like so. You can also use the standard sling attachment points here. Uh, this, I believe, is a 1.25 inch sling as we have it set up here so you guys can see. That's about the size that it's designed for for either side. So you can also come over the top here depending on how you want to set it up. There's so many different variables here for sling attachment points and how you guys are going to individually set them up. But that basically 
is how you attach your sling. Adjusting the length of the pole when it's on the extension is ambidextrous as well. This is our lever here, and this is also going to be used for installation, which we'll get to a little bit later on. But first, what we want to talk about is some of the anti-rattle features that are built in inside the stock. So we're going to hit it with a light here so you guys can kind of better see it. But basically what we have here is the tab that is moving. If you guys can see that there, that's going to lock into your stock. So it's compatible, as far as I know, with any 4, 6, or even the uh, Veltor style stocks. Magpul actually makes one now, from what I understand, stock extensions. And what you see here on this side, this little leaf spring there, if I can kind of get the camera in there, that's what's going to provide you the anti-rattle uh, feature of it. So there's going to be absolutely no play in terms of side-to-side -side movement on your stock. A lot of people really like that. I personally tend to not care too much, but it's a big feature for a lot of folks. Um, it's not going to be rattling around on you, slopping, making noise or anything like that. So that certainly is a good thing. And you can see there each sides of the stock, the sides of the stock rather, also have these rails there that are intended to guide the uh, stock along the underside of your standard uh, M4 receiver extension. So again, it's just going to give you a better fit than you'd have without them and just gives you another point of contact to prevent any sort of slop in your stock. Time for the size comparison, as I'm sure a lot of you guys have been looking forward to. I can't compare it to every stock out there on the market, unfortunately, guys. So I picked the SL stocks that I do have, as well as an older Magpul model here, which is still in production, I should add, um, to sort of compare size-wise. So uh, up first, we have the uh, K model. We'll sort of give it to that. So this is the smallest in the Magpul SL line. A couple things that are different that you guys can see, of course, is the overall length. We also give up some sling mounting options with the K here. So you don't have the QD uh, sling attachment point there, and you also don't have the option to mount it here underneath the uh, cheek piece. So it's the actual paddle is very similar, if not the same in design. However, the attachment system is a little bit different. Uh, you're just going to put a solid piece through there, like a firing pin. I know a lot of people use. I do not recommend you do that, but people do it. Um, and then here is designed a little bit different, which we're going to show you here in a little bit in a second, I should say. Weights, of course, are also dramatically different. I think this one here is like 7.9 ounces, and this one's uh, over 12 ounces here. We'll annotate on the bottom of the screen exactly what that is. Is. So weight conscious guys, there's your data. There's your cheek wall data as well. So you can see the K has a little bit of a swell over like a standard CTR. It's very minimal, but it is a little bit wider than that. But compared to the SLS, it's much more narrow in design. And that, that's intentional, of course. They designed the K stock for sort of sub guns, but a lot of guys like it for full size guns as well. We have the original SL stock here on the right, and we'll compare that in terms of cheek weld. Again, it's uh, very similar in terms of the K stock, so uh, a little bit more than mil spec, but nothing like we have here with the SLS. So, again, that's largely a user preference thing. We'll probably cover that a little bit later on, but of course, you do give up the capability to mount or to add batteries, rather, I should say. You do not have that compartment on there. But from the side, in terms of profile it's identical so no difference there it has the same type of uh, butt stock angle and all of that which certainly is a good thing i do like the sl stock as a good all-around stock and then finally we'll compare it to the old uh, one here i believe this is a cts stock so of course we have very different or ctr rather uh, attachment methods different locking methods all that stuff but in terms of size wise it's a little bit closer to the mil spec stock and it's the same size as the moe stock for those of you guys who are familiar with that still to this day a good stock so you'll see there it is thinner considerably in terms of cheek weld so you give up a little bit of surface area there for that locking system is totally different and size wise from the side you can see there it's a little bit shorter overall as well um, it has a little bit of a different angle if you look at the toes of them and it doesn't have that bottom piece that extends out for body armor um, on that option Time to get into installation. So you do need a mil spec receiver extension, or again, one of the A5 variants out there. It does not work with a commercial spec stock. So with that, uh, first thing we're gonna do is pull down on the adjustment lever here, exposing that little bit of uh, material there on the locking lever. Now you can use a bullet tip, you can use a punch. Uh, bullet tip does work quite well, which is exactly what we're gonna use there. So this is just a basic two, two, three bullet. And we're gonna line it up here on the receiver extension and you want it to be this little lever, you want it to be as far out as possible, sort of uh, pulling up on it. It's a little lot easier if you're not doing it under a camera, I can assure you. But hey, we'll do it for you guys here. And there you go, you just slide it on. Once you get over that initial uh, point, you can just adjust it as need be for your length of pull. 
like so. I know a lot of people wanted to see what it looks like fully collapsed. This is a BCM receiver extension here that you see on this rifle. So that's what it looks like fully collapsed. It doesn't come quite all the way down to the castle nut. There's a little bit of a gap, but it can extend all the way out just fine. And as you guys can see here, even when you slide it, very positively locks into place and there's absolutely no rattle at all on the stock. So it does lock up nice and snug. The one big feature that we didn't talk about so far is going to be price. Uh, these ones here are coming in right around $75 to $80. Most places over at Brownells checked today. I think it was like $75, $95 or something like that. So we'll put a link down below for those looking to pick one up. And that makes it, I think, the most expensive stock in Magpul's SL lineup, at least as far as I know of. But if you think that's expensive, check out their UBRs. Um, hopefully we'll review one of those one of these days, but they're expensive. Uh, anyway, so basically what do I think of it overall? Number one, I think it's an excellent stock. I love the toe design, the, the butt plate design. I like the ability to add batteries, and here's kind of my take on weight for stocks. So uh, I don't like heavy rifles, but I don't like super light rifles either. One thing I do like is if you're going to have weight, I like to have more weight in the rear um, rather than out front, if that makes sense. It just tends to balance better to me. It tends to be able to sort of swing the rifle from target to target and you can hold the rifle up longer on target if the weight is in the rear rather than the front of the rifle my personal opinion my personal experience there so I don't mind this here on a relatively lightweight rifle. In fact, I picked it specifically for the weight for my BCM OEM lightweight build. That's a lightweight rifle with a lightweight profile barrel and handguard out front. But again, I wanted that weight in the stock. It's my personal preference. It is what I like. Now, um, in terms of is the stock comfortable and does it give you the proper eye position when shooting? Um, I think for me, the answer is yes to both of those. Is it any slower or any more off center than some of the thinner stocks? For me, no. However, for some folks, again, depending on facial structure, it may be. So that's just something to consider, uh, especially when talking about standing. Now, for from the prone position, I find this to be more comfortable than the other ones, particularly if you have to lay in it for a while, whether or not you're doing a bunch of long distance shooting or you're in some sort of an overwatch role where you just have to lay behind your glass for a while. For me, this is definitely more comfortable, but again, it comes at the expense of cost uh, and weight in this case. So is it awesome? Do you need it? I don't know. Maybe it's really good. And uh, if it has the features that you like and you think it would work well with the type of shooting you do and your facial structure, then yeah, probably. Um, it's definitely a quality offering for sure. It stays nice and snug. And really in terms of a polymer stock, it's made extremely well as Magpul has sort of built a reputation on over the last decade or so. So uh, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the stock, by all means, you can post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And we hope to see you in the next video.